Many thanks for choosing us. A three teacher unions in the pre tertiary education sector, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers have declared an indefinite strike effective Friday, November 4, 2022. In response to the appointment of Dr. Eric Nkansa as the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, according to the unions, the appointment of Dr. Nkansa, who they described as a banker goes contrary to the collective agreement signed between teacher unions and the GES. NAC President Isaac Ousu addressed a news conference a while ago to announce the strike action. It was from this background that we made a reaction known on the dismissal of the Director General of the Ghana Education Service and subsequent appointment of a banker as an acting Director General contrary to the substantive and procedural rules of our collective agreement, which was signed in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, it must be stated that the Director General's position is the preserve of educationists and has been, has been occupied by educationists since its creation in the 1974 to date. Therefore, the appointment of a banker instead of educationists it's a manifestation of lack of confidence in teachers and to manage their own affairs and disregard the establishment scheme of service and progression within the Ghana Education Service. The teacher unions did not only register their protests but also found it unacceptable for a banker to be appointed as a director general of the Ghana Education Service. Instead of educationists, at a time when many teachers who did the same courses and related ones were rejected by GES because it is not related to education. We stated that both the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service should apologize to teachers for accepting the very qualification they rejected when teachers presented them, contract extension. We stated our opposition to the said contract extension and thereby sounded note of caution that we will vehemently and vigorously resist any attempt to bring Mr. Anthony Boate back into the system and that the consequences of any such attempt may be too dare to handle. We finally caution that should government fail to heed our call to our call leadership of the teacher unions will not be able to control the actions and inactions of their members and the ministry of education and ges may have themselves to blame in the final analysis we have been compelled under the current circumstances to publicly communicate to Ghanaians on our intention to go on strike having reached the november 4 deadline we gave the government Consequently, we have decided to embark on strike from today, Friday, 4th November 2022. By this, we are informing the general public that we are withdrawing all our services in all the pre tertiary education institutions. Nanama's goal, that's the resolve of private legal practitioner Martin Kwebu as he announces all is set for a massive protest that could be reloaded in the next 24 hours. The outspoken critic of President Ekofuado says the wanton corruption and mismanagement give a clear indication that Ghanaians can no longer wait until the end of his four-year term. Lawyer Martin Kwebu says after tomorrow's protest, the president together with his vice ought to leave office in order to pave way for the constitutional provision for his replacement to be set in motion. Reckless borrowing and other forms of misgovernance by President Ekufuado. We are dying. Citizens are dying. Citizens can't afford food. Citizens are starving. All because of malgovernance by President Ekufuado. It's never happened that you have a president in office and every time that the country borrows, the president's family becomes richer.
How? Every time the country borrows, the president's family becomes richer. How? This can't continue. It's not, Ghana doesn't belong to President Kufado's family. We can't borrow all the time and have data bank becoming richer all the time. The country becomes poorer and data bank becomes richer. This, without more, is sufficient for President Kufado to resign. You see how the incentive to borrow because his family will become richer has led us to overborrow, and today our city has totally collapsed. That now, when you need one dollar, you need at least 14 Ghana cities. When at the beginning of the year, one dollar was just six cities, 40 pesos. This has never happened. And so to that extent, based on Article 35 of our Constitution, which asks for probity, accountability, etc., which are also repeated in the preamble of the Constitution, citizens have a duty, a duty as stated in Article 41, to ask the president to resign. And this is not the first time that a president of Ghana is going to resign. In natural fact, in the 60s, Lieutenant General Ankara resigned over a matter of 6,000 Ghana cities that he's alleged to have used to bribe somebody organizing an opinion pool so that he can be declared as the most popular person in Ghana. You see, so ladies and gentlemen, where we are as of now in Ghana, the situation is so dire that the best thing is for President Kufado to take responsibility and to resign with his vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Indeed, the constitution has envisaged such a situation. That's why it's provided in Article 66 that the president may resign from office. The vice president may resign as well. So Article 66 says that the president has to just simply give his resignation to the Speaker of Parliament. And so that's the same thing Dr. Mahmoud Baumia will do. The phantom economic waste case, right? And Article 60, Clause 13 makes it clear that when the president and the vice are gone, the Speaker must take office for only three months. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, for only three months, and within that three months, the Electoral Commission must organize fresh elections. So it means that we will have a new president within the three months. That is to say that today, 4th November, if President Kufuado and uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia were to resign, it means that latest by 4th of February, a new president will be sworn in. So we would have had the elections in a new president sworn in. And look, people of Ghana, please, let's not despair. Let's go for it. Let Ikufuado and Baumia resign. Look, you'll be amazed at how the international community will welcome this new development. That our democracy would have been strengthened. That the president would have listened to the cry of the masses and resigned. And as a result of this, you'll be amazed at how much goodwill we will gain. Our debt, the new president can renegotiate for extension and all the other things that it will require. Trust me, when such a momentous event occurs, Meanwhile, security analyst Adib Sani has been given some security guidelines for tomorrow's event. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also important to note that it is not in our interest to have this protest getting mad by violence. Because in the end, uh, it would divert uh, opinions from the main crux of the matter to um, the violence and um, would ensure to the very best of our ability that um, it is peaceful. So I wish to appeal to all those attending to obey instructions. We need to use the route. We are not supposed to use any other route beyond what has been agreed on. So we avoid situations where protesters might, you know, confront the police or vice versa. Let me also appeal that no one should come to the protest site with any offensive weapon, whether it is a sharp pointed object or even a gun. Do not bear arms. And that is extremely important because we are trying to avoid situations in which 
certain individuals will want the whole process to be mad, so it defeats the purpose for which we were even in the first place. We are also receiving information that there is a possibility that some bad nuts might try to infiltrate. So I wish to appeal to you to keep an eye on your brother. Let's be each other's keeper. If you see anything and to what, do not hesitate to reach out to the police or even the protest leaders. And if you are in a situation you neither can reach out to the protest leaders or the police, you can call the police line. It's 18555. 18555. And let's ensure that we don't have individuals infiltrating and marrying uh, the whole event. Survival mode activated as some passengers say they have had to walk some parts of their journeys and pick commercial vehicles to continue their journey due to the hikes in transport fares. When Joy News visited some transport terminals in the national capital, arguments between bus conductors and passengers were rife. Here are some passengers and drivers sharing their frustration with Joy News. Madam, we told you it. We need to add banker, light bill. What I mean is, I mean, 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 a driver OT here, he plies his business from a brass spot here to Labadi, Wireless. to Labadi Wireless. And according to him, he's been in this business for the past 40 years. He has never for once seen this astronomical increase in transport fares for the past 40 years that he's been working. He also says that by this time of the day, he would have at least gone to wireless and back to circle at least two or three times. But at the same time today, he's just gone once and he's still in his vehicle. No one is coming to sit in, no passenger. Why? Because he says now the passengers are walking. When I asked him what he thinks that government can do to support them, he says he thinks government can actually do nothing. Because if government could have done something, government could have done it by now. He is actually asking government to pray because the way the situation is as at now he thinks it is only prayer that solve it very much so we can't actually we can't normally I drive cars but because of the fuel prices I have to come in to the trotro and even here and even now in the trotro it's not an easy affair at all and whenever you are in the trotro you see people fighting every day even me every day we have to argue because Today you have a price, even the next time, as you return, you pay a different higher price. It's quite bad. Everybody is suffering. The prices change on hourly basis, which is very, very bad. And you mentioned earlier that you used to drive. Yes. So you've been driving all this while. I drive my car, I mean, but now I can't afford the petrol. What kind of car, if you don't mind? I drive a Volvo Salon car, Volvo 50. Yes. And so how much did you have to now spend on fuel that you have to pack? Depending, but look, I have children, younger children, and I can't spend two, three hundred cities a day around Accra when my children have to eat. I can't even provide for them adequately. So it's a very difficult life. It's really difficult. In the Swam Industrial Enclave are backing calls by the majority in Parliament to sack Finance Minister Keno Furiata. Legislators on the majority side of Parliament, headed by MP for Asantia Chim North, Andy Apiakubi, impressed on the President to relieve the Finance Minister of his duties or risk losing their support for government business. The artisans say the poor management of the economy by the finance minister is enough to substantiate the calls. Emmanuel Bright Kweku interacted with some residents in the industrial enclave and has come through with this report. At least 85 members of the majority caucus in parliament are demanding the sack of finance minister Ken Oforiata 
and the Minister of State, Charles Edubwahi. The unanimous decision comes on the back of the high cost of living experienced by the Ghanaian citizenry. The legislators say their call is cemented by the outcry of their constituents who are reeling from the impact of the sinking economic situation. At the Swami constituency, a section of artisans in the industrial enclave supports the call. <laughs> They should sack him. Times are hard now. We are really suffering here at Swami. It's been six years now since he took office, but things aren't going as expected, so he has to be sacked. If you have been assigned to look after our finances and it appears things aren't going on well, you have to be sacked. However, President Ikufado, in response to the demand, requested that the finance minister be pardoned for the time being as he is currently leading the country in the IMF negotiations. The constituents disagree, citing the performance of the minister in managing Ghana's economy in the present fiscal year. Transport fares have increased. That's my shop. I imported some spare parts two weeks ago. They used to sell at 200 Ghana cities, but I cannot sell them at the same price now. A number of Ghanaians are hoping the president will heed their calls to usher in a new finance minister. Oh, Minister, no, I hope say, so. I hope 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 so. I for Joy News, Emmanuel Batskweku, reporting. Well, you have a finance minister who has gone through all the pains and aches, and nobody can come and say we don't understand what we are doing. And that's, those are the words of Finance Minister Ken Oforiata as he speaks for the first time since calls for his dismissal escalated. He has been under pressure to step down or be sacked over what is believed to be gross mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy. But speaking to members of the Association of the Ghana Industries in Accra last night, Mr. Oforiata expressed confidence the nation is purposed for greatness. Just to assure you that you have a uh, finance minister who has gone through all the pains and aches and nobody can really um, come and say you don't understand what we are doing. Um, the question is what resources do we have and how are we going to deploy them uh, in the nation um, that we have and how do you stand firm 
in very difficult circumstances, uh, but being very confident um, that uh, the nation is purposed uh, for greatness and uh, you are blessed to have the opportunity um, to lead where we are going. Um, so thanks, uh, Mr. President, for the encouragement. And um, let me assure you all that your best bet is still Ghana. Uh, we can do it and we should do it. These are very difficult and existential times in, in global, um, the global world. And um, I mean, the whole issue of this poly crisis, I think, has taken everybody for a turn. Um, that we all just need to admit, and how are we um, going to recalibrate ourselves um, to be able to uh, build a foundation um, not to be subject to um, the whims of these um, outside forces. Medical stores at the public health facilities risk an imminent shortage of drugs owing to the depreciating city against the dollar and recent price hikes. The Health Service Supply Chain Practitioners Association of Ghana says many bidders to public health facilities have returned procurement lists seeking upward adjustments of previously allocated prices of medical commodities. There's more in the following report. The current economic situation is biting hard on the procurement and supply chain sector. The Health Service Supply Chain Practitioners Association of Ghana, at its 14th annual general meeting in Kumasi, bemoaned challenges confronting medical stores at public health facilities. National President Stephen Sechi revealed the worsening economic situation has truncated the supply of certain medical products in parts of the country. Uh, we are looking at the current economic crisis. We all know what is happening. What is the certain is, is that tenders that were floated, every tender or every supplier, let me use the word that everybody can supply, suppliers that bought tenders from the facilities that will say they will supply this and that. They have all come back written to all the facilities that there should be upward review of prices or they can't supply. Some will not even respond and they will not supply at all. This is a lot, it's causing a lot of stockouts in the system right now. And it has disrupted the supply chain. Uh, a supplier quoted for maybe 50 pesos of paracetamol, uh, a tablet of paracetamol, 50 pesos, which they import mostly. So with the current economic crisis and the, what, how the dollar is behaving, now they will write back to the facility that they can't supply at the 50 pesos. They want an upward price adjustment. So maybe they can supply you at 70 pesos or one city. And look at the, the bed it's going to bring to the facility. Currently, most public health facilities have no allotted funds for procurement of non-medicine consumables. Stephen Sechi is imploring the government to institute a policy to allocate permanent funds for such products. When we say no medicine, we are talking about uh, exams, gloves, syringes, gauze, and those, all those things, etc. Even if even comes to buying of beds and all those things, the equipment for the facility. But here is a case that that money has been lumped together with the service charge for NHI. So when HIA reimburses us, and that money, as I have expanded, is used for all administrative expenses at the facility, including procuring non-medicine. So as always, we don't have the funds available to procure non-medicine. And this is creating a lot of issues in the system now. Because when you go to the facility now, sometimes you might not even get simple gloves for the, facility, the staff to use, because the funding are not there. And even the service charge that insurance pays is too woefully inadequate. The AGM was on the theme sustaining Ghana's health supply chain with improved research and data. Director of Supplies, Stores and Drug Management Division of the Ghana Health Service, Araba Kudiabo, wants the government to immediately resolve the human resource deficit in the supply chain sector. The need to respond quickly and decisively on issues of supply chain is now. Dr. Chair, the perennial issue of inadequate supply chain professionals across all levels need to be addressed as soon as possible to ensure the sustainability of these supply chain reforms. And I'm happy the ministry is here, and I wish the ministry engages the Ministry of Finance and gets us financial clearance for the recruitment of
supply chain professionals. Director of the Procurement Unit of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Edward Ejekum, urged the professionals to support the ongoing framework contracting policy for efficient operationalization in the health sector. The implementation of this important initiative is bedeviled by some challenges, mainly the high level of indebtedness due to the delay by the National Health Insurance, resulting in surprise, refusing to supply medicines under the framework to beneficiary institutions. The ministry will kindly support, solicit the support of all expert members at all levels across the country to support the successful implementation of the framework. For Joy News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku, reporting. Let's now get to the spiritual realm because I'm on a mission to pray for Ghana's peace and stability. Those are the words of the founder and head prophet of Christ Mercy Land Deliverance Ministry in Nigeria. The renowned televangelist prophet Jeremiah Omoto Fufeyi is in Ghana for three nights of ministration and healing service at the Black Star Square here in Accra. There's more in the following report. It was a charged atmosphere of prayers, signs, and wonders. But this is just one of the three more nights of the Christian Fellowship Program dubbed Recover All 2022. Founder and head prophet of Christ Messiland, Prophet Jeremiah Omutu Fufeyin, who is in Ghana for this year's event, tells Joy News he is on a mission to pray for the peace of the country and also stability ahead of the 2024 general elections. The prophets are the people are, who are always pray for countries. Right. So yeah, I am here in order to pray for peace uh, for Ghana, even the forthcoming election. Okay. Uh, I'm here to now because I was told the primaries are soon mm -hmm. by next or two years yeah. or so. Yes. Next year, two, yeah. Or next two years yeah. to come so that uh, the Lord can now choose the best for you people. So I'm here to pray for peace, good health, prosperity, and also God, when, when I pray, I know that God always uh, answered. So the people that who are here and who are not here, as far as I'm here in Akragana, uh, I am going to now pray, intervene uh, to, all, to Almighty God in order to now bless the country, Ghana. The man of God is inviting everyone to the program where he assures they will experience the power of God at this year's Recover All program. Um, I know that God is going to do something great in the life of people. If you are out there, you are barren, you have to come over. Uh, you are now facing difficulty right now in the working place, come over. I look for promotion in the working place, come over. Then you want to go to abroad, your visa and also your document are having problem, come over. Then also those that who are not married, come over. Then you are also always, every time you go to hospital for treatment and the rest, or your child is sick, sickness around you, come over. Then your dream life is not okay, come over. Then anyone that would need deliverance, come over. We are here for you with the word of God and also to deliver you in order to prophesy to your life for you people to receive your blessings. In the book of First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely recover them, and without fail, recover all. Live on Joy News today, we'll take a break. When we we'll return, there's a very latest coming from the world of business. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Executive Chairman of AB and David Law Firm, David Ofosudote, has challenged business owners to look beyond the current economic crisis and leverage growth opportunities. Businesses are taking a hit as the country navigates challenges triggered by both internal and external factors. However, Mr. Fusudote is certain there are numerous areas business owners can explore and compete in, but he says it requires the right mindset. He spoke at this year's Stanford Seed Business Conference. The current economic challenges are taking a toll on businesses. The cost of doing business has become high as the city declines in value 
and inflation continues to soar. Some businesses have warned they may be forced to shut down if there are no drastic measures to turn the economy around. However, the current crisis has the potential of creating opportunities for businesses. At least, executive chairman of AB and David Law Firm, David Ofosudote, thinks so. I want us to understand that in this crisis, there are 5,000 areas, and it is not an imaginary figure. There are 5,000 minimum areas in Africa that you can compete or dominate. Whether you are able to spot opportunities in these 5,000 areas depends completely entirely on your crisis mindset. Ms. Ofosu Dorte delivered the keynote address at this year's Stanford Seed Business Conference. Chairman of CDH Group, Dr. Dusakodie, urged business leaders to stay with their vision for success. Everything that goes up will come down. And so success is your complete anti-success. So after this will be another one. And if you choose to call it a crisis, so it is. I call it truly. And there are many lot of opportunities to be truly. Whilst businesses figure a way out of the crisis, economist and former chief executive of Stambik Bank Ghana, Dr. Al Hassan Andani, is challenging managers of the economy to fix the situation. The economy is a, is a model that a government gets out of. So it is about that economic model that we have run so far, which is not working for us. So we have, the people in power must go back and examine that model and create a new model that works. President of the Ghana chapter of the Stanford Sea Transformation Network, Linda Ya Ampa, acknowledged the past two years have been challenging for businesses. She expressed the network's commitment to help businesses with relevant insights to survive the current challenges. All right, so this conference is a flagship program of Stanford Sea Transformation Network Ghana. We do it every year. This year's theme was growth within the um, opportunities and growth within the crisis. Now we chose this theme because of the current crisis that we find ourselves in. As businesses, um, some of us are sinking, some of us are just afloat, some of us are thinking of shutting down completely. So we thought we'd come together, get seasoned business leaders to bring us together to discuss how we can keep our businesses going. The Stanford Sea Transformation Network has over 120 Ghanaian SMEs spread across 15 sectors of the economy, contributing to growth. Now, Chief Executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center is advocating the inclusion of the youth in roundtable discussions on policy formulation and implementation to boost Ghana's secular economy. Yofi Grant believes the youth represents the able workforce and future of the country has a need to incorporate their contributions in developing a robust economy. He was speaking at the Ashanti Regional Green Investment Forum organized by the Netherlands Development Organization, SNV. The Green Investment Forum is part of SNV's Green Project aimed at promoting sustainable development and growth of local, eco-friendly, but profitable small, medium and micro enterprises. The event highlights the economic opportunities available in a circular economy of the Ashanti region by exploring pragmatic solutions to challenges limiting investments in the green economy. Speaking at the event, Chief Executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, emphasized the need to involve youth in policy making. It's youth and the SMEs, because um, if you look at our population of 31 or 32 billion, 60% of that population is under the age of 30 years. And so even in creating new policies, etc., youth engagement is, is critical to ensure that, you know, they are engaged both at the policy stage and also at the implementation stage. Because whatever we talk about today is for the benefits of the youth, uh, not the old people. The youth are the ones who have the energy for innovation. They are the ones who are also making things happen and work. And I'm particularly delighted that at this workshop today, most of the people here are young people. The three-day event was under the theme, Pathways to Promoting Investment Opportunities in the Green and Circular Economy. The forum involved presentations, panel discussions and pitch sessions in understanding and demystifying the investment landscape for green entrepreneurs. Genevieve Pakachum is a senior advisor of the Green Acceleration and Incubation Program. 
Absolutely. Um, businesses are not exempted from the current um, hardship that is ongoing in the country. And so how do businesses survive? How can they protect their investments? How do they position themselves so that they can survive the turbulence? Um, it's all part of what we'll be looking at this week and ongoing as well for the SMEs in our program. We want to see how we can support them um, to be able to withstand the, the turbulence that we are experiencing now. Um, oftentimes, it's easier for the growing SMEs to find um, investments for their businesses, but very early stage SMEs struggle. And so we want to explore um, how we can promote um, investments for early stage SMEs. Project manager of the Green Project, Lawali Sada, says the project aims at creating youth employment. We are targeting 1,500 youth to create their own uh, sustainable jobs and also to give jobs to other youth. But here we are talking about SMEs uh, that uh, are supported will be exposed to all those ideas, innovation, challenges, solutions, so that they can strengthen their, their business and be able to, let's say, uh, help other youth. For Joy News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku, reporting. More news at the top of the hour on the market. Please do stay with us on Joy News today. Welcome back to Join News Today. Now, this afternoon, all is set for the Adum Praise Festival coming up at the Perez Dome in Accra. My colleague, Kojo Yang Singh, is at the event center, which will be headlined by Travis Green. Kojo Yang Singh, I need you to paint a picture of the atmosphere and mood at the event center. Aisha, I've got to tell you, Perez Dome is like you've never seen it. The spiritual charge in this room is like nothing you could imagine. I want to show you what I've been looking at. Now, as you can imagine, the Joy News and Joy FM and our Dome FM team are setting up here with all of their technical backup for the artists and the performers who are going to be setting this place alight tonight. Now, if you look around me, you see all these chairs arranged in this spiritually charged semicircle. 6,000 people are to be accommodated tonight when things kick off at the 12th Adum Praise Celebration. Now, I want to take you all the way up to the stage where Travis Green's band has been doing its sound check for a few hours now. Now, if you could hear these guys, it sounds like the real thing has already begun. Now, this is a group of people who have been working together for years. They know the material. They are ready to give us the absolute best. When Travis Green comes this way tonight to mount the stage and do his thing. All right. So he'll come in through here. He'll come up over here. And before you know it, he'll be up on the stage ready to regale this audience. Now, the people who have been working in the background to make this happen are right here. Everybody knows Tigo, Josh Tigo from Adom, and this is Brunez. Yes, yes, uh, sir. Brunez is a very busy man. The two of them together have been getting this place ready for the 6,000 people who are going to be blessed Let's tonight. Oh, man, we're ready. We're ready. Get here. Come yeah. right now. That is, that is the energy that these guys are bringing to yeah. tonight's show. Brunez, tell us exactly how many hours of preparation has gone into what you're doing tonight. Woo, so I flew in two days ago. As soon as I flew in, I met these guys at uh, Pastor Gideon's church. And we rehearsed from, I don't know, I think we left there at 2 o'clock in the morning. And then wow. yesterday, I got there around 2. We went from 2 to 6. And then I went back and then we went from 9 to 11. Now, it's beautiful that you're doing this with Ghanaian um, artists. My brothers, my brothers, family, we're all one. We're uh, all one. What do you think of the quality of work that you've been, uh, you've been exposed to? I think, it's a, I think it's amazing. Honestly, I've been inspired since the time I stepped down on the plane from musicianship to hospitality 
to everyone working on set. Everybody's just super nice, man. I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I didn't leave the United States. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. The Ghanaian hospitality yeah. works its way yeah. into our music industry as well. Yeah. Now, Josh, yeah. this is a big endeavor. Yes. And the electricity is already palpable. Exactly. Tell me what exactly has gone into the work you and Brunez and all the team have been doing to get this place ready for tonight. It's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. It's been, I mean, so all the, I mean, the team members you see around here have been amazing from day one. Uh, the organization, Charles Now and his team from the events department of Fabia, all the people you know of the usual suspects when it comes to events and coordination within the multimedia group. Everybody have, have put their shoulders to the wheel and, 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 and I'm so proud to be part of such a team. To be honest with you, we have never seen Adum Praise as just a music festival. We think that it's a spiritual exercise and that is why we put our all to it because once you do God's work and you do it so well, you can trust God that you are going to receive the blessings that you deserve. And so if you see any electricity like you have described it rightly, uh, I'm sure it is God at work already. It is Christ at work already. All right, the Holy Spirit is here. All that's left is you. Uh, we'll be talking a bit about Travis Green, who is headlining uh, tonight's event in just a moment. But before that, Tigo, tell us about all the other artists, the Ghanaian acts and the Nigerian acts and all the people who are coming together to create tonight's spectacle. Exactly. So, so I mean, I'm sure uh, as many as have listened to our promos know the names already, but you can talk about the so, so Winners group, a very powerful group. You can think about Pastor uh, um, um, Datsun. You, you can talk about PSA Extra, you can talk about um, our young lady called uh, F.A. Grace, very sensational. I mean, I love her music so much. You can, you can think about the likes of Ohima Mercy and the rest. But the, the, the side attraction for this year is that over the years, we've been accused of being too charismatic and too Pentecostal. And so what we have added this year is the Adventist feel. And oh, that's wow. why you see Pastor Enim Yurinchi. So our friends who have, who have felt left out in the past 11 edition, in the 12th edition, we have room for you. Come join us. Let's enjoy some SDA music. Wonderful. Listen, I'm going to leave the last word to you, Brunez, because, of course, you are doing this on behalf of Travis, who will be headlining tonight. Tell me, how excited is he? He is super excited. Listen, you've never seen energy like you're going to see tonight. He's bringing it all. He's well. He's rested. He's excited to get here. He has a word coming out of his belly just for you. I believe miracles are going to happen tonight. I believe healing's going to happen tonight. Everything you're hoping and praying for will happen tonight. Get here. Couldn't have said it better. Listen, get here because tonight, thanks to Adum Praise, yeah, yeah. And of course, if you haven't hymned yet, uh, get ready at 6 p.m. at the Doom uh, Praise uh, Festival at the Perez Dome. Let's go and hymn together. We'll take a break and bring you sports. <laughs> Good afternoon, time now to do sports. On joining you today with me, Muftar Nabila Abla. The Minister of Youth and Sports is currently on the floor of Parliament to present Ghana's budget for this year's FIFA World Cup. But before he does that, Joy Sports have laid hands on the document he will be presenting to a Parliament. And the content of that document has revealed that Ghana has budgeted about $8.2 million for the group stages of the Mundial. Ghana is in a group that has Portugal, Uruguay and South Korea. The Black Stars will open their campaign on November 24 before playing South Korea and Uruguay on November 28 and December 2 respectively. The senior national team is expected to start camping on November 10 and all the players are expected to arrive in the Black Stars camp on November 14. They'll play a friendly match, a last friendly match, of course, against Switzerland on November 17, before emplaining to Qatar on November 18 for the tournament that starts on November 20. Ghana opens its campaign after missing out on the uh, last edition, which happened in 2014. The last time the Black Stars were there was in the Brazil 2014 tournament, where Ghana exited at the group stage. The 10-car team, 
uh, that is going for the tournament. There are about 21 of them per the document that has been cited by Joy Sports. And the $8.2 million is only for the group stages. The budget will increase as the Black Stars uh, proceeds to next stage of the uh, competition. Already FIFA has given Ghana about $1.5 million and that money was used for friendly matches against Brazil and Nicaragua. And part of it would also be used for a friendly match against uh, Switzerland on November 17. So it means Ghana still has about $9 million to take from FIFA. Now let's hear from uh, former Black Stars uh, head coach CK Akono. He's been speaking about how he was stripped of the Black Stars captaincy during his days as leader of the senior national team. I, in fact, we were going to a uh, match in Germany, Wolfsburg, and I was the captain, choked at the back, <laughs> watching my TV, you know, relaxing, and then I had a call from BBC, whoever it was, but it was uh, an English uh, number, uh, that the squad is out, are you aware you are not part of the squad? I choked. <laughs> I was shocked, I said, eh? uh, No, uh, I was trying to play yeah. tough. Yeah. I was like, what? And truly, then after talking to the uh, the, journalist. the journalist, I called one or two people and then I asked and said yes. I said, ah, what happened? So if even if that was the case, wouldn't they have, have, told you? have called me just to inform me? Who was the coach then? Oof, I think was it some do or I don't know. I don't know. The guy who took them to. Um, the, the, if you find out the, the, the person who took them to the Burkina uh, tournament, okay. it should be, I, I don't I have a bad memory. So that should be like that 2002, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, so I, I still wanted to play. I still wanted to play. Ah, if, so you, so you, uh, you were forcibly retired from the Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm saying that I was the captain of Wolfsburg. You understand me? Yes. And one way or the other, maybe they were not satisfied with me as the captain of the team. But I could still be part of the team. You understand? I could still be, I don't have a problem. I could still be part of them, contribute in a certain way. You understand me? Rather, they decide not to call me, not to tell me. I was out, out from the squad, and it became, I was hurt. Telling you, I was, I was hurt. It hurt me so bad. That's your sports for now, but we do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. I am Muftar Nabila Abdullahi. As I wrap up the bulletin this afternoon, my name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjoyonline.com. You'll get more of the news and updates of all the developing stories to enjoy the rest of our programs.